points that I wanted to make. So it actually is really perfect lead into this sort of stuff. So five minutes, so I thought I'd try and keep it kind of light. So the more than one way to skin a cat sort of uh, idea here. The point of this simply is that no one technique for sentiment analysis, and this is largely what Claire was saying as well, fits every problem. You've got to understand the problem you're trying to solve to understand the technique you're going to apply. So if anybody says this is the be-all and end-all way to solve the problem, it means they're, they're, really, they're really trying to sell you something. So you know, focus on understanding your problem, and then that will help you understand the solution. So a real quickie on us. Um, so, oh, I left a really funny one at the top. Our marketing guy put the text links in, and I just had to leave it there because I thought it was so hilarious. That then I couldn't, had a hard time bringing myself to even say that. But, uh, we've been at it for about seven years, and for us, sentiment has been a key focus. We've had it for about six years, and we've had it at an MV level for about five years, I think. So, um, we're in a lot of different vertical markets, and in almost all of them, sentiment is a key piece for us. So, uh, just a little bit on that. So, so here's sort of the, the key to this. So, you got to understand the problems you're trying to solve, um, and you can't use one technique. So, uh, our base engine out of the box is actually uh, a link NLP or a grammatic model so that we'll understand uh, Good, the language and grammar of a sentence. So we'll, under, we'll tear apart sentences, we'll understand speaker and subject, we'll understand, Claire said, the, the sort of pronoun co-reference, pronominal co-reference stuff, he and John Smith are the same person, that sort of thing. And that's a really nice um, out-of-the-box solution. And it is in the low 70s, 70 percent of accuracy. But it actually has some wonderful advantages. Right? If you can take a system like that, you can do document, you can do entity level with a system like that, you can just install the software, turn it on, and pump fairly generic, fairly broad-based content through it. You don't have to spend a lot of time training it, you don't have to do a lot of lead-in work to get the system working. You do pay a slight price in accuracy, but you get, you can just turn it on and go. So it's really nice for that, actually, uh, financial services, and, and news in particular, generic news content, are two areas where that really works quite well, um, and it saves you a ton of time getting going. There also mentioned a model base, <coughs> which we also have. So you have, uh, in our case, it's a maximum entropy model, not that anybody should care about that, but basically the idea there is that you can provide training content to the system, and you can make it work both at a document and an entity level again, a really good example there would be something like uh, travel and tourism, uh, and in this case, foreign language as well. But it's, let's say you took uh, travel and tourism. It's a very narrow vertical. If you were scoring, say, hotel reviews, you, you've got a very s small sort of language pattern in there. You can train the engine, and it can get incredibly accurate. Actually, we did some work on hotel reviews. And that's a case where, to Glenn's question, you can actually get into the high 80s of accuracy because the humans end up being very accurate. Because it's not, it's not a distributed area, so humans tend to agree a lot more on the reviews. Um, so you can get that. So, the other thing we used the model-based approach for, and, and I'll speak to the numbers in a second, because they're a little misleading and I don't want anybody to, to jump down my throat on that. We're also starting, well, foreign language came up as a key element in this earlier. We've started doing foreign language work. We're, we're doing French, Spanish, and Portuguese first. We're focusing on Romance languages. A grammatic model is a hard, heavy lift to build. A model-based approach is easier to build, and that's why we're using that for foreign languages. Um, it lets you stand up a system much quicker. So right now we're working on French, and, and as an initial pass at this, we did uh, sentence level scoring in French, French language. And, and you can see here, sentence level stuff. It's sentence level, those accuracies I don't believe are that good. That's because of the size of the training set. It's about 2,000 sentences. 500, we ran 
random ones through and got very high numbers, I don't think they're that quite that good when you roll out a real system. So, in the end, okay. Last bit. When you try these systems, understand your problems. Ask everybody to drive the software. There's a lot of different techniques. Make sure they let you kick it around, try it out. Do not just believe the numbers. Everybody's been talking accuracy. Try it out.